Hello Internet! Now that a few episodes of my series about quantum mechanics are out, it is high time I say a few words about it. What it is, why it is needed and how you can get the most out of it. There will be some important comments and book recommendations at the end, so don't miss this one. Quantum mechanics revolutionized the physical worldview in 1926 and it has been the bedrock of our physical understanding since then. Surely there is no shortage of presentations of such an important theory, you might think. So what's the point? One need only look at the endless discussions about quantum mechanics online to note indications of pedagogical trouble. In my estimation, one cause of this confusion is the big gap between imprecise and overstated popular expositions and precise but understated technical accounts. But why is quantum mechanics difficult to teach at all? Quantum mechanics affords insights into what we call reality. Insights which are notoriously difficult to convey both in human languages and in mathematical notation. The latter being, after all, an optimized and compressed subset of precise human language. In particular, quantum mechanics is incompatible with an ideology we may call materialism or realism. An ideology that is so prevalent today that many don't even recognize it as an ideology and mistake it for scientific thinking itself. This ideology presupposes that the world we experience can be fully described in terms of physical objects or quantities without any essential reference to these quantities being consciously observed. By now, a long history of careful experimentation supports quantum mechanics and refutes the implications of materialism. How can our zeitgeist remain oblivious to that, despite the wealth of both technical and popular reports? On the technical side, textbooks teach the essential mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics and how to apply it to physical problems. However, in their characteristic mixture of wisdom and cowardice, these books have mostly withdrawn from the fog of philosophical battlegrounds. When readers ask themselves what to make of it all, they are left to their own devices. If any philosophical conclusions are to be drawn, the authors mostly trust their readers to figure those out on their own. The philosophical understatement of these advanced presentations has yielded the field to well-intended but confused popularizers and to verbose charlatans. It has also facilitated the growth of a philosophical fringe discipline that grandiosely identifies as the foundations of quantum mechanics, although it has brought forth nothing to deserve this name. Despite its lack of scientific productivity, this discipline has convinced the public that the understanding of quantum mechanics would be an unfinished and active field of research, while it actually is an individual matter of retracing insights obtained in the 1920s, and remaining deficiencies are mostly pedagogical rather than foundational. This isn't to say that there weren't any mysteries left in physics. There are plenty. But one must clarify quantum mechanics rather than obfuscate it in order to tackle those. In contrast to the scholarly caution of textbooks, popular expositions rarely are plagued by an excess of wisdom. They have problems of their own. Popularizers tend to overstate the supposed weirdness of quantum mechanics. They give partial explanations or none at all, reinforcing the appearance that quantum mechanics would be incomplete and in need of one of many additional interpretations in order to make sense. Quite the opposite is the case. As we will see, quantum mechanics is a complete and crystal clear theory with precise meaning and physical interpretation. And there is essentially one way to make sense of it. And it needs no interpretations beyond those postulated by the theory itself. One particular issue with popular presentations is the use of misleading visualizations. 
quantum mechanics suffers from our media's ever-increasing reliance on visuals more than any other discipline. Because according to a key insight of the theory, one cannot form a complete and correct picture of the unobserved world. Also, the avoidance of mathematical equations inevitably overemphasizes negative statements. Without formulae, it is much easier to say, for example, that you cannot know position and momentum at the same time than to state precisely what you can know according to quantum mechanics. The negative statements are important, but without their affirmative counterparts, they might create the impression that quantum mechanics has nothing to offer beyond its denial of classical certainty. Only by including the mathematical formulation can we appreciate quantum mechanics as a complete theory, one which is very positive and precise about what we can and cannot know about nature. Finally, popular accounts reiterate soundbites from luminaries of physics uncritically. Casual remarks like Feynman's quip that nobody understands things or mistakes like Einstein's spooky action are repeated over and over again and these quotes haunt the reception of quantum mechanics far beyond their expiration date and original context. Don't overvalue such imprecise remarks, which are not backed by careful arguments and predictions. Science is not furthered one born more at a time. In summary, the technical material on quantum mechanics is fine, but once you look for explanations it leaves out elsewhere, you are likely to be misled by inaccurate presentations. The aim of this series is to fill this gap and to explain interesting conceptual and philosophical points consistently. But before we continue, if you enjoy this series, please consider supporting me on Subscribestar, where you can also get a little peek behind the scenes. In any case, please comment and share the video. It helps a lot. A few words about what this series is and what it isn't. This series attempts an explanation, not a scientific defense of quantum mechanics. If you're looking for the latter, you will find it in the scientific literature, where almost a century's worth of experiments and theoretical analysis gives conclusive evidence in favor of quantum mechanics. My videos are also not meant as a replacement for textbooks or lecture courses. While I try to keep them mostly self-contained, the videos are designed to work best as a complement to existing introductions. It's totally fine if you just want to come along and get a first impression. But if you are determined to understand everything, which is even better, you will need a textbook. For a first encounter I recommend the Feynman lectures. These lectures, which rank among the best overall introductions to physics, are even available for free online. Volume 1 contains a short introduction to quantum mechanics, and Volume 3 is entirely dedicated to it. Feynman's lectures maintain a firm connection to experiments, so you can convince yourself that careful observation makes the conclusions of quantum mechanics inevitable. A brilliant presentation of theoretical quantum mechanics is The Principles of Quantum Mechanics by Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac, one of the founding fathers of the theory. You should definitely get this one if you're serious. In order to understand advanced books like Dirac's, you will need a good grounding in linear algebra. Most undergraduate textbooks will do, but I particularly recommend Linear Algebra Done Right by Sheldon Axler. It is very accessible and covers exactly what you need for quantum mechanics. For starters, take a look at the wonderful videos by 3Blue1Brown. He has a playlist on linear algebra, which I will link in the description. As an additional resource, there will be written notes for most of the episodes. You can find PDFs linked in the descriptions of the corresponding videos. The notes fill in some technical gaps, add examples, and give more detailed arguments than is possible in the videos. Given all these great sources, 
What could possibly keep you from understanding quantum mechanics? One of the biggest obstacles is that many people cling to materialist or realist ideas, which are incompatible with quantum mechanics. For brevity, we will use materialism here to refer to all such ideas that presuppose that the world can be described purely in terms of objective physical quantities that are meaningful without any essential reference to them being consciously observed. Materialism has been tacitly associated with the scientific worldview for such a long time that people confuse one for the other. Because of that, giving up materialism is seen as a loss of perceived intellectual control or even as abandoning science altogether. That is not the case at all. We must distinguish between materialism and scientific thinking. And we must realize that the demise of materialism does not detract from scientific thinking in the least. Science is grounded in experience, not in ideas. Experience, by definition, is gained by conscious observation. Thus, there cannot be any reason a priori to exclude the concept of conscious observation from scientific theories. Note that speaking about conscious observation only requires us to acknowledge consciousness, not to understand or describe it. The materialist idea that our experience would be caused by a pre-existing objective reality which can be conceptually separated from our observations, must be formulated as a hypothesis within the scientific framework, rather than be assumed a priori and without reason. Once formulated, materialism has to be subjected to the same scrutiny as any other hypothesis. Actually, materialism is not operationally well-defined or specific enough to be tested on its own. What we can do is to compare those physical theories that are compatible with materialist metaphysics and those that are not. It turns out that classical physical theories, which are compatible with materialism, fail experimental tests, while quantum mechanics, which is incompatible with materialism, has a perfect experimental record. The ruling is clear. Abandoning materialism is not only scientifically justified, but necessary. In the very reverse of polemic attacks on quantum mechanics, it is the defenders of materialism who are injecting mysticism into science by clinging to metaphysical preconceptions about a supposed objective reality which cannot be shown to be compatible with experience. Finally, since this series is about a physical theory, we'd better define what we mean by physical. For the purpose of this series, we define the physical as that which can be observed, at least in principle. The word physical in physical theory means that the theory is about the physical, not that the theory itself would be physical. This distinction is not trivial, because physical theories may also need non-physical elements in order to speak successfully about the physical world. Feynman makes this important point in Volume 1. Physical theories are allowed to contain unobservable, in our definition, non-physical elements, as long as they are used for making correct predictions about observable results. This is not new at all. All physical theories use numbers, for example, even though numbers themselves are unobservable non-physical abstractions. The concept of conscious observation is another unobservable, in this sense, non-physical element that just turns out to be essential in descriptions of the physical world. That's all for now. See you in episode 1 where we'll discuss in detail what a physical theory is made of. If you have any questions about this video, please post them in the comments below. 
What the heck? Just comment anyway. See you next time.